Hello, Darth Vegan here with a short tutorial series for the game A Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Um, this game is in early access by the developer of 3 Division currently, and uh, some of this material covered in this tutorial may be outdated when you watch this video because the developer is doing a great job of uh, sending frequent updates to, uh, to all of those who have uh, purchased the game. So, it is a great little game. It is a city management slash resource management production line game. So it's kind of a mix, kind of a little bit of a hybrid. But I wanted to go through a little bit of what the setup of the game is when you first get started and some of, uh, some of your options you can do there. So let's go ahead and start a new game. Um, there are two locations you can start with currently. One is a blank Eastern Europe medium hills map. And the second one is an Eastern Europe medium hills map, which is the same map. However, the second map has some starting little villages with some population that you can adjust um, already on the map with people already living there, um, basically doing nothing. And then down here you have the overall difficulty. Now, these difficulty levels... Uh, modify all of your options down here. If you go very easy, everything is on the easiest part, and then it progressively gets harded, harded, no, harder, and then you could also, if you mo modify it, it'll be custom. So let's go through each one of these and discuss them very briefly. Money amount, uh, you get unlimited money. Easy, I believe you start with 10 million rubles. Uh, medium, uh, I think it's like three million and I've never started on hard so I'm not sure unsatisfied citizens reaction um, on small if citizens don't get what they want they will react with grumpiness on reasonable if they don't get what they want they'll be cross they'll be cross and react accordingly and on hard uh, if citizens don't get what they need they will react very negatively and there are a lot of needs for these citizens there's food there is entertainment, there is culture, um, sports, religion, yes, religion, alcohol, um, lot, lots of different things that they require in order to be happy. So um, on medium and on hard, uh, people will start leaving if you don't uh, satisfy their needs. Um, or escaping, I should say, <laughs> as the game calls it. Uh, energy management. Uh, on disabled, you do not need power lines, and vehicles don't need fuel. Um, buildings only, you need power lines, but vehicles don't need fuel. And buildings and vehicles, you need both. All right. Night and day cycle is uh, well, night and day. That's self-explanatory. Building fires, uh, you got normal, frequent, and then none. Okay, so that's that's pretty self-explanatory as well. Global events has not been enabled yet. That uh, That is a feature that is yet to be developed. Pollution. Um, factories create pollution, which negatively affects its citizens. This is, this is enabled, but I have yet to see anything come of fruition of, of in any of my playthroughs um, with this. But perhaps there has to be a tremendous amount before it negatively affects you. I don't know. Um, year of start. This determines what vehicles you can uh, begin with. Largely is uh, is the difference. Uh, however, that being said, you can start in these different time periods and then click all to allow your vehicles to be available in all years. And then finally, the education simulation uh, with simple um, children automatically reach basic basic education. You do not need elementary schools, and parents can work when their children are under six years old, you don't need kindergarten, which is kind of used as a daycare in this game, <clears throat> which people use, use as a daycare in real life as well. Anyway, um, with complex, you need, you need both of those buildings. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go with, um, I'm going to, I'm going to go with a medium here. However, I'm going to put the money on easy just so that, uh, we can show you, uh, a little bit of the, the different things here. Building fires. I'm going to put on normal, um, we'll do 1970 start and we'll do, uh, I, I tend to like to, uh, lock my vehicles with the year that I start because it kind of adds to it, I think. And then I'll put, uh, the education simulation on complex 
and buildings and vehicles for my energy management. So this is typically how I play. You can modify this to whatever you like, but in this tutorial, these will be the stats that uh, I will be using um, and addressing these things accordingly. However, I strongly recommend when you first start to start with a map with uh, citizens already populated because uh, that there's you'll, you'll see. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, once the game starts, uh, you start out on the map, and if you selected the uh, map with uh, people already on it, you'll see these little villages here put together. I wanted to go through the AI right quick, uh, and all of the things that all of these different icons do, and then uh, that will be the end of this first episode. It's super, uh, super concise, I hope. <laughs> so uh, looking at the map you can see you can left click on buildings and it gives you a uh, plethora of information different buildings give you different amounts of information and you simply click on the X in the corner to close those pop-ups um, roads also are, are seen but they cannot be clicked on uh, but just about every building uh, in the game can be clicked on and uh, we'll go through what all those icons mean in just a moment First, let's go across the top, your toolbar here. The uh, first icon is your settings. This is where you will do your saving, uh, all of your sound, mouse, and uh, game control setup, all of these things for your graphics and whatnot. All right. The next one is your resource status. So this tells you, um, with, a distance, with a distance from your camera, uh, and I have all maps selected right now, what all resources do you have in your town? Uh, be it wood, bricks, cement, oil, those types of things. Um, and you can select whether you want to see inside of buildings, inside of vehicles, inside of trains, or uh, just in one of these to see what you're transporting. It's a very useful little tool. The next tool is your population statistics. It tells you how much population you have, uh, how many of them are workers, how many of them are babies, how many of them are children, and how many are adult children. And then it gives you an overall status of their needs. All right, so first is their happiness. Next is, are they satiated? Satiation comes from both meat and food. Uh, next is health. Next is government loyalty. Next is alcohol addiction. Next is culture enjoyment. Sports enjoyment. Religious sympathy. And clothes quality. And then down here, you'll see how many of your uh, employees are unemployed, which this is a, not quite a true figure, okay? And we'll get into that in a later episode. Um, your average productivity, average lifespan, average age, and then what your education is. So you can see that 2,477 of my uh, citizens do not have an education. 6,937 have a basic education. And then 671 have a university ed education. Now, I'm going to assume that a large portion of my uh, non-educated employees are my babies. So if you add these two together, you will get uh, no education. So yes, uh, definitely. All right. And then we also see that uh, none of my citizens have electronics. That's because all these villages are very poor and they don't have anything. And then down here are your trend graphs that you can do. For different uh, different periods of time and uh, and look at your growth or, or whatever you want to look at there the next two uh, are your uh, your building icons the first one is infrastructure and I want to talk about a little bit uh, this this section here uh, is very important very important so um, you can you have two types of money dollars from the NATO countries and rubles from the Soviet bloc. So you can choose which you want to build with when you're doing your building. Uh, in addition, when you're doing any of this uh, terraforming, you can choose to build with your rubles or dollars. And there's also a way to get free terraforming by uh, just using the communist <laughs> uh, you know, work philosophy where uh, everybody does their share. And uh, we'll get into that here in a moment. But uh, very generally, I'm going to go ahead and put it on rubles for now, just for demonstration. Very generally, raised terrain. Uh, if, uh, if you want to see how level the terrain is, you click on show wireframe. White is level. Um, red 
is is uh, steep, uh, like very steep, and then yellow is either higher or lower than than uh, flat. So we'll take this flat area here. You can see that's pretty white, and we're just going to hold down the left click button, and you can see we're raising a mountain up here, just a little nasty little hill. So we're going to zoom in here, and you can see uh, you can raise a hill. Now, also, if you use the mouse scroll wheel while we have the leveling. Uh, the terraforming tools it increases or decreases the size of the area you wish to uh, terraform you can see I'm just building a hill here and it's uh, it's huge all right and it's taking a lot of taking lots of money take note of that all right the other one is lower terrain of course and you can do the same thing uh, only you are lowering the terrain just like uh, raising the terrain and you eventually will get to the sea level and get water <laughs> Okay, there's also the level terrain, which does an average based on your uh, red dot there in the center of that circle. So if I do a level, uh, yeah, level terrain there, you can see it brings all of the terrain up to the same level as that mouse dot. Now, level terrain from height from center is very similar, um, but it works a little differently as far as the averages go. So this one is height from center. This is just an average overall in the circle. All right, you can also create uh, an area and name it. All right, so you just click that and then you can click and, and uh, create all these different names. Um, I don't know, is there a way to delete these? Yes, you can click on these and delete them if you accidentally did what I just did. You can also rename them to whatever you like. A. I'm such an original namer. Oh, name's too short. Okay, there you have about that can't stop me all right and then we'll go ahead and uh, get those off of there all right so that is the uh, the gist of that and then demolish is you can clear like uh, any dirt or trees or roads or anything that you want to demolish you can demolish with a bulldozer all right and then the um, the icons down here are all of your infrastructure buildings that you can do the first is roads all right, so there's a plethora of different kinds of roads, and each one of these roads have a different speed value, both driving and walking. The higher you go in complexity, the faster people can travel with them. Um, the least uh, expensive is the mud road, and you can just click it from one section to another, and then you have a nice mud road. Next is a gravel road, and if you start with the map that has villages, all of the roads that exist on the map currently are the uh, gravel road. And I should have turned off the night cycle <laughs> for the purpose of this video. Okay, so each one of these roads that uh, co exists on the pre-made map are gravel roads. You can upgrade them to asphalt roads by uh, left clicking and dragging that on there. And then of course your last type of road is asphalt road with street lights and sidewalks. And these are very useful for inside of your town so that your people can uh, travel on roads and go to their locations very quickly and safely. So uh, with, uh, with the roads with the sidewalks, people can walk along the road a lot safer and a lot quicker. Um, down here are the different kinds of bridges you can build. Again, the more com complex bridges give you better speed and they also have different aesthetic uh, as well. And of course you can build tunnels through hills um, as well. And then you have uh, road related buildings. Uh, bus platforms, which are very important to get workers where they're going. Uh, one thing to note on bus platforms is uh, the, the bus platform path here inside of the building does not count as a road. So do not put this inside your road path thinking that uh, cars will just drive by the bus stop um, that's not how that works. Um, you also have a small bus platform as well. A road cargo uh, station is to dump a very small amount of uh, resources on the side of the road. Um, a truck aggregate loading is to load uh, resources, typically the uh, what I call minerals, um, from a production facility. And then unloading is to unload it from that facility. Uh, and then lastly, the gas station uh, f provides fuel for your uh, vehicles if you chose that difficulty level. 
And then the Road Vehicles Depot is where you buy vehicles for your playthrough. And we will use that uh, in, uh, in some future episodes to show you how to do several things for free as far as terraforming, but not, uh, not quite yet. Okay, for the other icons in the infrastructure, you have railways, which are like the roads. And uh, I will do a whole separate uh, tutorial on railways, especially semaphores. But uh, you could either have uh, diesel-based trains or electric trains on those. Um, the next one is factory connections. So that when you build a production facility and a storage facility next door to one another, you can build a factory connection so that they, the goods can flow seamlessly between those two buildings without having to truck them. Footpaths are for people to use from buildings. So if you select the footpath icon, you can see these little icons show up from all the buildings and you can build a footpath for people to get from one building to another um, or from footpath to footpath. And we'll go over uh, roads and footpaths and how finicky the system can be and how to get around those little uh, quirks. Um, conveyors are similar to factory connections except uh, the uh, materials actually flow over land uh, in a conveyor belt instead of just like with forklifts and whatnot. Uh, and you use these to tra uh, transfer resources from building to building over long distances. And you can include these uh, transfer buildings to continue the conveyor belt in multiple directions and, uh, and do that. All right, and then the pipeline is for your fluid resources, oil, fuel, bitumen, uh, those types of things, and you have the uh, appropriate storage and pumps for those as well. Then you have electricity. All right, so electricity is uh, it's pretty easily managed in this game. Uh, at the start of the game, you should be able to find a uh, power connection on one of the border countries. Uh, Soviet bloc, if you want to pay for rubles, uh, and, or the NATO countries, if you want to pay for it in dollars. But you simply connect your high voltage wires to uh, the substation and then you can build power lines. And then you can convert high voltage to low voltage using um, a transfer, uh, called a transfer, transformer, excuse me. Uh, and then the, you can change also um, to medium wires and there's three different wattages that you can trans, uh, transmit using uh, your electricity. And we'll go into electricity a little more in depth in another episode, but you must get electricity to a substation in order to provide power to buildings. So, so now this building will have supply. Once I buy some electricity, there we go. You can see now it has supply. Okay, so that's electricity. Um, and that is it for the infrastructure portion of this. Now we'll go to the construction. Again, you got the same terraforming tools, and then you have your different types of buildings. You have your construction-related industries. So I'll just look at those right quick. It's uh, you know pretty typical of what you would think about construction. Um, you got gravel, you got uh, concrete, asphalt, and then the appropriate storage facilities for those. You got the residential buildings. There's all kinds of different uh, quality of building where people will be happier if they live in certain types of buildings and then certain amount of workers lives in those types of buildings. And then you have the things to keep your citizens happy. You got a grocery store, a small store, a uh, shopping center, a small shopping center, a cinema, a pub, tennis playground, and a football playground. Now all of these things are necessary in each neighborhood in some capacity to keep your people happy. Then of course you also have the some of the same things we saw in the road. Uh, you got uh, bus platforms, train platforms, and so forth and so on. Um, the civil facility, um, you have radio stations, fire stations, pollution, monitoring station, hospital, and television station. All right. And we'll talk about uh, educational needs. Educational needs, you have the kindergarten and the school, and pretty much every neighborhood needs both of those. Kindergarten basically takes care of your babies and the school educates uh, everybody above baby age, basically. Um, anybody who is uneducated can go to school, doesn't matter if they're an adult or not, and they can receive an education. Uh, also, there are some more advanced uh, 
universities. However, it's labeled incorrectly. It says kindergarten and elementary school. But uh, again, early access. There's a medical university, a technical university, and the headquarters of the Calvinist Party. At the, at the point of me making this video, the technical university is really the only one that is useful uh, in-game as far as provides a direct benefit of doing research. Um, you can train as many professional workers in the technical university as you can the medical university. You don't need a medical university to train doctors or anything like that. They can train at the technical university. And then the hostels uh, are university halls of residence for the uh, universities and then of course you got uh, just like with every section you got platforms down here that they can use um, food and crops related is exactly what it sounds like crops uh, distillery for alcohol livestock for meat such and so forth oil and fuel you got your oil wells and uh, oil refinery chemical plants asphalt plants plastics uh, various industries, you got wood coating and sawmills, fabric and clothes, and then some of the things that you can research to unlock later, plastics, mechanical, electrical, and electrical assembly. Um, you got your gravel, coal, and iron. So these are your uh, mineral resources that you can uh, collect. You got your storages and warehouses. So these are all the different ways you can store materials. We'll you'll be doing a lot of that, hopefully. Energy related is you can build your power plant and then you can also build some of the uh, infrastructure buildings. And then lastly, trees and accessories. And these monuments down here provide culture for your people. So you can plop one of these bad boys down and then if you if you put a path to that, uh, st to that statue, as you can see it automatically did, because I was close enough to an existing uh, infrastructure, people will come to this statue and get culture they'll be happy and then of course you can plant trees so if you use a sawmill and you run out of trees you can plant more trees uh, and it would be nice if you could just hold down the left click but you, you can't you have to left click every time you want to plant a tree so anyway that's that's neither here nor there so that is all of the two uh, building uh, icons next we have economy and trade this one shows your imports and exports you can see I've already imported several things uh, just to build the buildings that I did uh, and you can see the how much I imported and the cost of those uh, resources and then you can show your domestic production and consumption over a period of time and then uh, importantly the current prices on the global market what they buy for and what they sell for in both dollars and rubles so this will be very important once you start building up your resources and you want to start making some money to pay for your uh, glorious Republic and then lastly is the list of vehicles and buildings you can look for road vehicles trains or buildings anywhere on the map and then you can see uh, by clicking on them uh, everything that they need uh, in that in that building so we'll, we'll go ahead and look at one of these buildings right quick and go over the icons that are available in it um, this is a one of the old houses here it's this house it's a big house. It can house 95 workers. Um, it currently has 57. And you can look at the breakdown of the people in that house. And you can see here the people with a vest here are people who are ready to work. The people that do not have a vest are people who are off work. All right, so there are uh, work cycles. People have working eight hour shifts. And then the, um, the stats of the people in this building as far as how satisfied they are and their education and basically the same thing we saw with the entire population statistics are here in each building and you can see the different statistics in each building and they this one has a triangle on it because something is wrong with this building it does not have power 11 workers don't have a job six children can't go to school because there's no school one worker can't go to school because there's no kindergarten and 46 citizens are currently without power. So these are some of the things that you need to be on the lookout for in your buildings. And one of the things you can look at um, when you're looking at residential buildings in particular are how to relocate people for free. And that's one of the things I mentioned about starting with this uh, a map with people uh, in these villages as you could build a, a city out here in the middle of nowhere. Like if I wanted to build a city right here, I could take 
workers from these existing houses in these villages and relocate them to my newly constructed buildings. So that's uh, that's why I always start with villages. But again, that's up to you. It's up to your discretion. And you can invite, uh, you can basically buy people. You can invite immigrants from the third world. They have no education. You can invite immigrants from the Soviet bloc. They have basic education. Or you can invite immigrants from the Soviet bloc that are experts and have a university education. You can also click on the eye to view the building directly if you're somewhere far away. Uh, you can click on this little guy and you can see where all the buildings can be reached by footpath or road. Uh, one thing to mention about this is in this glorious Soviet Republic, people will walk no further than 250 meters uh, to a place of business or pleasure. So if you want to try to centralize uh, your buildings, that would be efficient because um, otherwise I'll have to take a bus. And then you can also click and see if there's any electrical connections, which there is not in this case. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the icons up here. You have your time passage here. You can pause it. You can play normal speed. You can play at faster speed. You have your dollars from the uh, NATO countries and then the rubles from the Soviet countries. I did have a pop-up down here that showed me that I have some new building, I mean a new uh, vehicle to construct. You also have pop-ups for fires and things like that. Um, so I hope this first episode uh, allowed you to get acquainted with at least the UI and the, uh, the things you can do in the game. Um, the next episode we will talk about uh, terraforming and ways to do that cheaply and easily prior to even getting started building your town. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.